Hello, good evening, and welcome to um, another chat between myself and Greg. This tonight, uh, well, for the last couple of weeks, we've been uh, we've done um, two previous uh, subjects on the importance of dream, and then last week we did on the importance of form. It's a deliberately simple format. Um, Greg and I basically just try and take the subject. Uh, we're always looking for your contribution, so. As and when you join us, please do use the Q&A app. We've got it all switched on in the inside, so we'll be able to see your questions as they come up. We'll try and deal with them one by one. Be great if you can get some of those questions in early so that we're not trying to process too many of them towards the end. And As we go along, I'll take breaks to remind you to put your questions in. Um, so this week we are on the importance, we're going to discuss on the importance of poetry. Now, we've deliberately framed this so that it isn't really a question directly about poetry as such. So in that sense, you don't really need to know uh, the ins and outs of King Lear or Shakespeare or Dante or any of the other great uh, pieces that we've quoted on the um, on the, the, the event page. In fact, I've got a couple of things here, that, which I'll just kind of read out briefly. Douglas Murray in Standpoint magazine last week uh, wrote a... a and a kind of a, a, a sense, well, this is what he wrote, to re-inject our culture with some sense of a deeper purpose need not be a proselytizing mission, but an aspiration of which we should be aware. But that aspiration will be impossible to fulfill if the religious think that those who have split off from the same tree are their greatest problem, while those on the secular branch try to saw themselves off the tree from the tree as a whole. Uh, people can sense that, and the resulting want of meaning, meaning which arises from such shallows. And I think, in in a sense, although that, that's a very long um, essay, and I've just clipped a very short point, point I, I think that business about meaning is really where poetry fits in. Um, poetry, not in the set, not in the high art sense, but the poetry of kind of living from moment to moment from uh, fragment to fragment and finding uh, a way of conjoining those fragments uh, in, in, in a meaningful sense. Ian Foster uh, famously wrote in one of his great novels, um, Only Connect, um, and that was a reference to you know, fa the fragments of meaning within life. Uh, the, the artist's job is to connect those and make something greater than the sum of, the, of all the fragments. Um, there's also another quote there from Dougal Hine, who had a great uh, piece of great reaction to the UK election last week as well. But um, so, Greg, um, sorry, before I, I, I get to Greg, please do send us your questions. Use the Q&A app that you can see either in Google Plus or on, if you're watching us on YouTube there. We'll pick up your questions. We'll try and process them as we go along. But, Greg, first word to you. It was really in our post program conversation last week that you suggest that we should look at poetry in what sense are you you thinking poetry is important in the non-literary sense yeah let, let me say i mean i don't know very much about it either i have to think sort of quite hard about it but i mean poetry is uh, the art of language and within the arts there are many languages so you could say if you're a painter you could say in, on the importance of painting or a few musicians on the importance of music or whatever um i've spent my life engaged in words and um you know wrestling with the word rather than the power that music has over the word or and and stuff like that and i just to me, they're kind of, well, this is the way that I would go about it, right? We have on the one hand religion, and we have on the other hand science. Religion is basically the politics of the spirit. That is, it's, it, it has its own opinion, it has its own right and wrongs about where we're going, right? It's not necessarily about the everyday right but it's an attempt to go deeper and also then to claim one part of that way of looking at depth as the one and only truth that there is 
and that leads to a great split in religions and so on. But it's the politics, as far as I see, it's the politics of the spirit. Science is the elucidation of fact. That is, where we get to if we go through um, the, uh, the, dream, the, the dream of what life is, to try and establish the building blocks of life, right? As 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 a factual entity, uh, science is always searching for the fact, for the for, for the for the truth through fact. That is, we can say this is so, we can prove it is so. Therefore, we can move on from there. Scientists then, in different ages, change their mind about it. So, what's the fact at one stage? is not the fact of the next but usually there is a kind of progression that what is seen at one point as the falsification of fact then leads on to another definition of the fact which makes it nearer to the truth stuck in the middle of that is the, the world of the imagination the world of the artist and they're they're, they're not oh, and it's they're not concerned with the Although a lot of their subject is political, they're not actually concerned with the politics of the spirit so much as the elucidation of the spirit uh, that, that, that is within all of us, with, is, 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 is what is being worked out at the depths of all of us, coming right, going right back to the beginning of the the human experience and going back further than that to 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 the coming of life to this planet and therefore it it, it kind of covers the same ground as science but in in a very different way it's not trying to tell you what is it's trying to explore what moves us what is important to us in terms of the value of science the value of religion or whatever and so and so it's it's the, the, the artist is not laying down an opinion about something. It's simply saying, to me, the artist, there are these things happening in the world that link the everyday with the spiritual assumption that we start from, right? But in, in, in a way that is not saying that's the way that you have to look at it. So if you read a poem, you're... you're, you're you're not looking for the factual truth of that poem, but the validity of the experience of the person who has explored the spirit of a particular occasion and is simply trying to express it without laying down a law. And that's the only way that you can look at it. So there's a, there, there, there's a kind of um, search within ourselves, whether we know we're making that search or not. The fact that we're alive, I mean, spirit is breath. Why, that, what do we give to the world through the breath that we breathe in and out? And what is the quality of that within the form that we're trying to express ourselves in? If you're a poet, then you try and do it through poetry. If you're an artist, you do it through art and so on. That seems to me the territory. It's not an opinion. It's not. It's not the politics of anything. It 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 is an exploration of the spirit itself that comes out within the relationship between the body and the mind and all these things that make up the human experience. Okay, now we've got a first question here, Greg, and it's for Pete, Pete Cooper. Um, and uh, Pete, Pete talks about painting as a form of poetry. Poetry morphs into all art form. I think that we've covered that. But he all, I mean, this is similar to the question you asked last week. How can we make this kind of discussion accessible, understandable, understandable and owned by the people? I think I get some of that. I'm not quite sure what you mean, Pete, when you talk about the people uh, as an abstract or a collective, or let's just say outside the kind of um, the, the rarefied atmosphere of this particular uh, discussion. But I think the accessibility and understandability of high concepts like this, um, 
I mean, for instance, today was a, I did a um, a piece on Slugger, the blog that I run on politics, and I used the word narrative. And I got first the the first uh, tweet that came back to me was, "Please don't use the N word, right?" And I went, oh "God, what have I done? What have I said? What I thought I'd said something really terrible." And the terrible thing that I'd said was, I used the word narrative. And, and um, I, I, I then, because I'd been talking about it with uh, with with someone else on Google Plus, came up with this very clever word called um, if, I, "If I can find a way of sharing this, I will." Uh, it's a di diegesis. Um, that's nothing to do with Jesus. It's um, hold on, let me just uh, see if I can screen share this one. Um, it's a Wikipedia page, um, which is just a nice way of kind of talking about. Well, it's a complicated way of talking about narrative, but 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 it's also a way of getting off the hook of um, of what narrative is and what 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 it's about. That and it's and it goes right back to Greek Greece and that sort of. That sort of construct, that way that the Greeks just had of pulling lots of things together and hanging um, kind of ideas off it. Um, so, it, I mean, it referenced Plato and talks about comedy and tragedy and epic poetry and lyric poetry and all of that sort of stuff. Um, I'm just going to switch that off so you got me again. Um, so there, there is something kind of otherworldly about some of these concepts that we talk about it isn't grounded in the normal everyday reality as it's lived by ordinary people which is what i take pete to mean when he when he talks about this um um accessible and understandable um how how do we marry this 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 need in a way to to live in ordinary lives where story matters more than high concepts of art of poetry and narrative and the epic and the the the, the ineffable and the effable and the effing and effable um greg I'll, I'll throw that one back to you because are we just living in abstracts here or does this have some tangible tangible reality in ordinary life to me every human being lives out the poetry of their lives whether they know they're doing it, whether they're putting it into a language or not, at, at, at the depth of, of the life that people lead, you know, the, the, the giving birth, the dying, the, the struggles through life, they are wrestling with their own poetry and they have their own language for it. But, I mean, m maybe the, the, the situation is complicated today because since the Renaissance, Renaissance there has been a tendency to intellectualize everything. That is, to, to, to put into the hands of people we call professionals the decision-making about what is good or what is bad in a particular form. But the early poetry, I mean, uh, the, the, the ballads that, uh, and things like that, they... they they, they, well, they were spoken, they weren't written down, it's the coming of the writing it down that does it. And those, and those ballads, you know, covered the ordinary lives of people, the, the lives of ordinary people. And to me, ordinary is not a, 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 a word to disparage. I think uh, it's, it's one of the most important words that we have, because as other people get on with, you know, writing their poetry down, it's ordinary people who have to live the life out um, in a way at its most basic and, 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 and therefore it is at its deepest. Whether they understand or not, if, if they want then to move to read poetry, okay, fine, they can do it. But a lot of poetry uh, that, that I look at is as difficult for me to understand as, you know, for anybody who's not been through this the professional educational world that we're a part of now so Be Pe becky coleman um so that, i'm just going to slightly pick up on that greg because you you did mention music um 
somewhat, you know, the as a as a kind of an older for, art form. And and Becky, one of the things I'd say in this particular conversation is, and I, I, I will ask Greg to respond to this in a minute. But one one of the things that I I don't want to get too hung up on form, whether it be you know music or painting or art. I think the poetry, in the terms that Greg is coaching it, is a, is a kind of um. It's it's that I, I put the quote up on on the event page just for posterity's sake, so that it would be captured in text. But it, it it's it's something playful. It's something um, unique uh, and uh, and unique to a kind of an, an individual. So poetry, in that sense, in the sense that Greg has experienced, it is a poetry of language. But there's poetry in music and poetry in. In, in in that sort of imaginative act, if you like that, that pulling down something. But but um, so Be Becky points out that hasn't music, especially since it's so easily available via the web, taken over or replaced the printed form, you know, the classic printed form of poetry. Now, I, I, I just to just to kind of push that out a little bit further, perhaps in a direction, um, Becky hadn't intended but but there have been in certain forms of music as as in rapping um we've we've seen um huge i mean rap, rapping is really fun fascinating because it seems to have um ridden the wave of popularity almost better than anything else that's kind of come up uh, over over the last thirty years, and and it has an ab an abiding appeal to young people because it, at its heart, as at its core, is music that pushes the spirit, but also it it uses the rhythm and the cadence of language uh, in a way that allows often very disaffected young people to come up with some deep expression of who they who they are. I mean, obviously, it has. Um, its origins in Black American culture, but but some of the rappers that that that, that I've seen and spoken to uh, in the past w will say that they recognise a lot of the same rhythms in um, the poetry of Sh Shakespeare. And latterly, on YouTube, you can find um, people uh, right across Ireland, many different accents and all the rest of it. Um, telling their stories, their own particular stories, in their own accent, and their own cadence, but using many of the tools brought uh, to them by, you know, black American popular popular music. So the, 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 there's something there about the kind of the, the popular form that still allows some of that outwelling, if you like, of the, uh, of the individual spirit um, to, um, you know, to express itself and to be heard and to be listened to. Greg? Yeah, well, I, uh, the point is I've tried with with poetry, with the poetry that I write, that is with the word, my concern with the word, is, is, is not to detach itself from the music, but to try and handle words um, in, a, in a way that they make their own music. And I think that music has, in many ways, overwhelmed the word, uh, particularly with all this, you know, the technology around, uh, with the with the with the means of creating uh, those sounds. But it's apart from that, I really want to stay out of the argument because a lot of music to me seems to be very shallow. A lot of a, a lot of the. A, a, a lot of the, the the value of music seems to be fashionable for a moment, then it dies out. I don't know, you know. I, I've uh, I like jazz, uh, you know. I like various kinds of music, but I, but it's in some ways music has moved away from its roots, and quite a lot of it sounds to me very very similar. But that's an old man talking, you know. That's um, I'm eighty seven. I. The, the 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 music of 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 my time was um, something that sort of uh, got dismissed by the music of today from the from the sixties on. There was a kind of a movement thrown out. So I don't really want to enter into what 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 makes good or bad music. I leave that to other people who are a lot more skillful and 
and understanding about it. But within within the music of words, I think we have lost something. I think that, that there's a well, we there t within words there are two things. There's prose and poetry, say, prose and verse. Prose is is the means is is really the major carrier of the story and it's also the, the the carrier of the polemic the political opinion the well any opinion about it's it's it it's exploring in another way about how we've come to where we are and, and what we're going on to poetry doesn't have to be about that i see the difference um to me between poetry and prose and the more the poetry gets set down on the page for example looking like prose following the same rules as prose that is the sentence structure and things like that it becomes in a sense prosif pro prosified prosaic in in to me because i'm looking for something very very different uh from poetry it's the I don't want music to take over from poetry because in another, although they are both art forms, they do have something different to say. Very often, the only way that you can explain music is through words. People talk about the music that they've heard. Those are words that they talk about. They don't sit down and hum another tune, you know, or hum another, but put, put notes together. There's a there's an area where where the word has it is on its own and it's um I, okay it, uh, the, 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 the far as far as i had a bit to pete cooper's uh business but i can, can I, we come to that in a minute Craig? I've, I've I've put that up. Been teaching. i don't think we can tell people what they must like or what they must like you just hope that in their way they come to the use of these forms that will help them in the understanding of their own lives and how they express use that form is up to them. Greg, just quickly before I, I want to come on to uh, Pete's stuff properly, um, um, but just a quick break here because I think it's uh, it's useful. Farnes has put up um, uh, a, a short piece of poetry from um, Persian fourteenth century Persian poet called. And I'm not going to get this right, Parnas, but um, uh, Haifetz, Haifiz or Haifetz. Um, uh, and it begins with the question, where does the real poetry come from? Where does poetry live? Every sane mind knows when it realizes our life dances only for a few magic seconds. From the heart saying, shouting, I am so damn alive. And that's a that's a translation from, let me get it right, Daniel Ladinsky. And there's there's something there, Greg, that, that sort of, in a way, captures that ungovernability of the poetic spirit. And and it's interesting, and because I, I deal with politics so much, uh, I, every time there's an election, we we always go back to that great quote from. Um, What's his name? Uh, Cuomo, Mario Cuomo, the former uh, governor of New York, who says that you campaign in prose, but sorry, you campaign in poetry, but you govern in prose. And it seems to me that's a that's a useful way of stepping outside into a metaphorical use of the word poetry. But of course, the problem the problem in politics is that um, you, you make all your promises in poetry, but then you're stuck with the prosaic reality of what you can't deliver uh, and that's possibly one explanation as to why uh, politics attracts so much uh, in the way of cynical reaction but, but with, within the within the prosaic every day people are living out their own poetry mm. uh, the, 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 you know what they bring to that situation um, every day they go through it i mean the only situation that we've got to go through is our everyday situation as far as we know that is we live our life from beginning to end uh, one day at a time but within that every day there is the core of poetry when i when i said i was a teacher and i didn't believe in teaching 
I spent 19 years of my life as an English teacher, so-called, not telling people how they had to write. There was a woman in, <clears throat> in a village school in Sol near Salisbury who in invented a form called intensive writing where she got the kids to you to look at objects in a different way and each and, and each line to look at this particular say it was a butterfly you looked at the butterfly in a different way each time and that added up to your perception of what a butterfly was it might have been it might have been paradoxical one line might be very different from the next and I'd, i i took up that idea of intensive writing and from then till now, I never told people or children how to write poetry, but I did give them the experience, the time within the classroom to try it for themselves, to try it by playing a piece of music, by, by working from a stimulus, um, then asking them to go on with it in the way that they went on with it. And, and to put, put each thought down line by line, not to try and make a continuous uh, statement out of it and not to bother about the um but about the punctuation of it because that's a prosaic thing and as far as i know and i still do it now with a group of um senior women in the local u3a who in the seven years i've been taking them i've been running the course i've never told one of them how to write a poem they've discovered themselves how to use language in a way that moves them deeper from, you know, in, uh, uh, to a deeper appreciation of their own living experience. Well, that's, that's, that's the value of poetry. That, that is really interesting because in, in a sense you've explained exactly how you deal with that challenge that Pete has put up uh, uh, and we, you can see it on the screen. Um, but I, I'm going to put this question out from Becky Coleman. Um, which I think begs a question of your technique as much as anything else. And g given that what we were talking about last week was the importance of form and how, how form is really critical to kind of grounding these things, um, I, there seems to be a slight contradiction between you not telling people what the form is and just allowing them to go ahead and make their own mistakes and do what they do. And, and this idea of form being critical to meaning and the capturing of something you know, around that. But but um, uh, Becky says, so perhaps the issue is poetic criti criticism, which is failing us. Music lyrics actually lack the talented li literary critic to inform the public. Um, how much depth does Ode on a Greek Urn have without the explanations and the background? Now, you've, oh, just, said, you've, just, you've just said they don't need, they don't need this intermediary. No, they don't. But but that but in a sense, owed to the Grecian urn, owed on the Greek. I mean, it, it, we've all, if we've been through grammar school education or or post elementary education, then you are fed with a view of what poetry is, and those poems have a great effect on you because you those are the ones that you remember. Um, so there, there's that. But it's but I've. The, the thing about poetic crit about criticism is criticism can only be of what is criticism rare well i can think of um, an error in my statement but, but most criticism really is about accepting what the form is at that moment and writing about what is good and what is bad um at, at, at that moment uh, it it doesn't it's not reaching out to what is not there yet uh i mean some of the i was trying to think on um, some of the critics some of the statements of poets like matthew arnold and coleridge and people like that they do hit upon uh a, 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 they do help you to understand what's going on at that moment but basically criticism can only be there if the product is produced in the first place and you and for me in, in my teacher, I mean, I, I, I did two years in uh, Uganda, where I got the whole of the whole, I call it the English block, 200 people went to English at the same time, working in groups of six, 36 groups in the same room at the same time, right? And they decided um, how they would tackle the program 
I gave the stimulus of the program and said that over in a month you have to write this, you have you have to use this form or that form or that form. But they had to find out and they did the judgment of it. They they sat down and read each other's work and they made the comment on it. It's you, you have to take that you have to take the teacher out of teaching. Not negatively, but in a way that enables the so-called taught to realize it's their world and what they make of what they do helps them they're not doing it because it has been prescribed by somebody who has more knowledge than they have okay uh, uh, i'm going to stop you there greg partly because we run out of time partly because i think we're running into a whole different subject and you and i will chat about exactly what we're going to do next week but i wonder if we could start with that that idea of education in its original Greek sense of drawing out of of the person rather than putting in, if you like. Um, but just to come back to some of the things that you said at the very beginning, so we can just round this one off uh, roughly with where we started. You said at the beginning what, that religion is the politics of the spirit and science is the elucidation of fact and an attempt to establish life as a factual entity. But poetry is somewhere stuck in the middle, in the world, in the world of the artist, in the world of the imagination. Not so much to do with the poet, politics of the spirit. It's trying to explore what moves us in terms of the value of science or the the value of religious, you know, re religious life. Well, yeah, I just looked at uh, what what Farinas Pazes put up as a question and i agree but but it's fair it, you can't get to one without the other and maybe we should carry on with this subject this particular subject next week right and deal with the conceptual meaning and impact of poetry but we don't know what the impact of poetry is you know with, within a given time it's um other various schools of poetry is the present battle that that since the 60s has been going on between Liverpool and London, for example. Um, it, is, is that important to what poetry is? Is it just a fashion of the time? I have to, you know, I think that question by Franis Parsney is, is in a way worth starting with next week is, is because, because I think that it's difficult. I don't know. Uh, well, I'm not even sure what the technical technicality of poetry is, rather than the conceptual meaning. They, they blend, you know, and and we arrive at one because we think some, you know, a particular thing of the other. I don't know. Okay. Well, let, let's um, let's do that. Um... Fairness, thanks very much for your input and uh, Becky and Pete um, for your questions earlier on. So uh, tonight, well, I think we'll basically go, uh, we'll, we'll find some way of capturing that in a one word or two words, but we'll try and move on to the, to, 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 to uh, I don't know, trying to capture somehow what poetry is. The deep paradox in all of this is that we're we're trying to kind of ascribe some importance to an art form that has paradoxically got very popular. It's grown with um, universal education uh, and and um, the capacity of people to write. And there's something very immediate, particularly about poetry in its classical written form. Yes, music is more accessible on a wider a wider scale but in terms of human expression many people have written poets po poems or uh pieces of intensive writing as greg puts it um just in the privacy of their own uh it, it, their own lives in a sense not, not not necessarily ever sharing that because language is for most of us uh a tool that sort of comes with normal cognitive development and i just wonder whether else I mean, whether with that, that universalization of the creation uh, process, whether that has, you know, Greg, you, 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 you said earlier that you, you get exposed to things like Ode on a Grecian Urn. Um, 
I'm not sure that that is quite the case in the way that it used to be. Even when I was at school, which back in the 60s and 70s, um, that, that, that people are kind of exposed to art in, in that sense and exposed to the critical examination of that, 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 that art quite in the way that, that they once were. Um, so it's become more universal. It's become more of a primary tool, perhaps, um, that it's a sort of a, that some of its impact is on the people who write the poetry as much as the the, the reading of other people's poetry, and, and in fact, you know what we've seen, say in the um, the, the 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 life of um, great contemporary poets like um, Seamus Heaney, um, who held the first chair of poetry at Oxford, um, who taught at Harvard, who who, who had a you know, seats in academia all over the world and who primarily earned his living from doing, uh, talking about poetry rather than the poet, poetry itself. And mind you, he made a few pennies off that too. But, you know, Heaney is part of a very small class of people these days who who are widely read. Uh, and it, it seems to me that there's a, there's a kind of an interesting shift there. But I don't want to say too much more on that. We'll want to come back to that one. Uh, next week. So please do join us uh, next week, right about half past nine. We'll try and keep it regular. We'll try and keep it tight. And um, thanks for your questions tonight. And uh, join us then next week at half past nine. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening.